Hi everyone, uh, thanks for checking out this video. Um, so this is actually gonna be a little bit different from like most of my lessons, because most of the videos I make are like uh, tutorials on uh, computational biology and programming and stuff and kind of like teaching the material. But this video is gonna actually be more about um, life advice for people who are considering if they should um, get a PhD in bioinformatics, computational biology, or data science. And for people like sort of considering the next step in their, uh, in their career and if they or kind of like uh, thinking about if it would be a good choice to go to grad school in one of these subjects. Um, so this is gonna be, um, instead of like teaching the material of computational bio like I usually do, this is gonna be more of like um, life advice uh, for if you're considering going to grad school to, uh, to study it. So um, a bit about my background. So I'm actually, um, I'm currently finishing up the third year of my PhD program in, um, in uh, the, the title of the program is called Bioinformatics Data Science. And then the specific uh, topic I'm studying is uh, computational cell biology. So it's kind of like a, basically what I'm doing is kind of like a, some, some mix of these three topics uh, for, my, um, for my grad school studies. And uh, so as you guys can probably guess, like this, this question of like, if you should, um, if you should go to grad school for, for these topics, it's not gonna, I'm not gonna be giving you guys like a yes or no answer, because obviously it's kind of like a different choice for everyone. And there's no, there's no right answer really that's, that applies to everyone. It's kind of like a subjective thing. But I will tell you that like, at least from my standpoint, um, I'm definitely like really enjoying grad school so far. And it actually feels like I'm kind of like living the dream because I mean, basically like, I'm basically getting paid to do like my hobby, which is um, like scientific research and stuff and like programming and, uh, and just researching these cool topics. And I'm basically, I basically get paid to like work on cool research and um, I thought about this before, how like, even if I were to like win the lottery and like suddenly become rich to the point where I didn't have to work anymore, I'll probably still like voluntarily choose to keep doing what I'm doing just because I actually uh, really enjoy it. So it's like, even if I was rich and like didn't have to work for a living, I'll probably still want to like keep doing exactly what I'm doing just because like it is really like my passion and I, I really, uh, really love doing it. So for me, I can say that like, um, I'm really enjoying my time in grad school so far, but but at the same time, it, it, that might not be the case for everyone. So I'm going to be going through in this video some things to consider about like if if this is like the right choice for you. And uh, so it's like even though I'm really enjoying, it, it's like it could be. Uh, I'm just going to tell you guys like everything, all the information that I think is like helpful making this choice because it's going to be like different for everyone. And um, just yeah, so I mean, there's there's no this isn't going to be like a yes or no answer. So in fact, I'll just put I'll, I'll put it here. Uh, maybe just, yeah, just for now, can just, uh, just say maybe for this, for this question. But yes, yeah, so, I mean, it's like the first thing you think about is like, what even is a PhD program? Um, because actually a lot of people I think don't know this. And definitely when I was in college, I didn't know this because I was just, I had just assumed that a PhD program was like similar to, um, undergrad or even like similar to like other types of grad school, like law school, med school, um, stuff like that. Um, I had assumed, like, if you had asked me when I was in college, I, I would have said, like, uh, I would have said, like, no way would I ever go to a PhD program because I, I had thought that it was just going to be, like, five more years of undergrad, like, five more years of, like, sitting in classrooms, um, five more years of, like, taking tests, taking exams, doing homework and stuff like that. But actually, um, a PhD program is, like, a lot different from undergrad and a lot different from, like, other types of grad school even. Because really, it's it's really not all like sitting in classrooms and stuff. Um, really, even though it's even though you're considered a student, and even though it is a type of grad school, it really feels more like um, it's more like an entry level job in in like the scientific research field. So it's really it really isn't like sitting in classrooms. It really is more like working on scientific research, like as almost like an apprentice or something. So it's, it's kind of like being like an apprentice for like, um, and like an actual professor who's actually like a professional uh, scientific researcher. So, um, so yeah, I didn't realize this at the time, but it's like only like a PhD program is probably going to be like five or six years, but really like only the first year is even spent like taking classes or it's, it's like maybe the first year, maybe the first like year and a half. But yeah, it's like a year to maybe like a year and a half, like two years tops will be spent like actually taking classes and stuff. 
And then all of the rest of the time, after you finish the required classes, like all of, all the stuff after that is just going to be like working on research. It's not going to be sitting in the classroom. It's not going to be like taking midterms or whatever. It's going to be like working on research for your um, your advisor, the, the professor you're working for. It's going to be like working on research like as an assistant for that person and like TA, TA in classes, meaning like being like the teacher's assistant. Um, but yeah, so, so only like the first, the first year or like possibly year and a half, two years, that's the only time where you'll be like sitting in the classroom. After that, it's just going to be like working on research. It kind of feels like being like an apprentice or like an entry level, um, entry level researcher, or like research assistant. So in some ways it feels like more like a job, but I, I found this to be like a totally like, um, I, I found this to be like definitely like a plus because I really was not interested um, after undergrad in like five more years of undergrad, like five more years of like taking classes and stuff. Um, so if it was that, I would not have wanted to do it. But um, it's, it really is cool to be like, uh, oh, the other thing too is that you actually get paid. Like in most, in most PhD situations, you're actually getting paid to do this stuff. So it's not like with undergrad, um, it's kind of like you have to pay them to go to school. With the PhD program, like most of them at least, um, if it's like a funded program, which I think like most of them are, um, they actually pay you. So not only is there like no tuition, but they actually pay you um, a small salary. Um, so, so not so, so. I mean, really, in some ways, it, it doesn't seem like um, it doesn't really seem like school at all. It seems more like a job, like an entry level uh, job. Which I know I'm kind of repeating myself a little bit, but it's like most of what you're going to be doing is like, they actually pay you and you're getting paid to like work on research. as like a research assistant, um, for a professor. So that's going to be like, probably like four out of the five years of the PhD program will be like not sitting in the classroom. It'll be actually like getting paid to work on research, um, which is pretty cool. So, so yeah, here I'll put, here I'll put, uh, I guess just not like undergrad, uh, more like an entry level research, sorry, research job. And then maybe also put, um, you put like you get paid rather than you paying them. Um, okay. So I guess that's, that's all, that's all for like that section. Um, but yeah, just say, keep in mind that it's not going to be like other types of grad school where you're sitting in the classroom. It's going to feel more like um, an entry level research job and you'll also be getting paid rather than uh, rather than you paying them. So then the next thing to think about is um, is a PhD versus a master's degree and kind of like what are the differences? Um, what what will you need for the job you want to pursue and advantages and disadvantages of each? So another thing that I didn't realize before and I think a lot of people don't realize is that you actually don't you don't need to already have a master's to um, apply for a PhD program. You can apply for a PhD program straight out of undergrad. So I'll, I'll make a note of this here. Um, um, yeah, so I was just saying like, uh, so I actually, I didn't have a master's um, I actually still don't have a master's. I mean, I'm still, uh, still never got a master's, just um, finished with undergrad. And then I worked for a couple of years and then applied to a PhD program um, without needing a master's. And I think a lot of people don't realize this. And I didn't realize it until someone told me that like, you don't need to already have a master's um, to get a PhD, which I, I found surprising because I was like, I thought it was kind of like uh, the master's is like the next step. And then the PhD is like the step after that. You actually don't need a master's um, to get a PhD, which came as a surprise to me. Um, it can help sometimes if you're applying for like a competitive PhD program. It can help to already have a master's, and it may um, it may having a master's like may cut down some of the time that you're in it. Uh, that you're in the program, it, it may be that the program's shorter if you're already coming into it with a master's, or that that may also not be the case. I mean, I think in, in my program, I I don't think that's actually the case unless you can like um, kind of transfer some of your credits over or something. Um, but yeah, so this is something to keep in mind is that when you're, when you're thinking about like a PhD versus a master's, um, 
you don't need to already have a master's to apply for uh, the PhD program. Um, but with that being said, it's like, depending on what you're trying to get, what your long-term career goals are, like a master's may make more sense or it might not. But a couple things to think about, like I, I don't want to sound too much like I'm advocating too much for one or the other because, um, yeah, for some, for some fields, you may only want a master's. But something else to think about is like for a master's program, like probably you're going to be paying tuition and you're going to be paying them. So um, I'll just make a note of this too. So I'll just like, yeah, like make a note of this, like for a master's degree, unless you get some kind of like scholarship or like a funded master's program or something, like probably you're going to be like paying for it. So you may just like take out more debt or something, but a PhD, um, as long as you're in a funded program, which like most of them are, like, I mean, it's like I said before, um, I guess I'll just kind of like reemphasize, like you actually don't need to pay for it and they actually pay you. So that's kind of like a cool thing. But, but then at the same time, I mean, they're, they're like, if for your career field, you only, if you're only, if it's only required to have a master's degree, you may not want to like waste the extra time in a PhD program. So like, I mean, for masters, it's, it's probably going to be like, um, like one to two years. Whereas a PhD is going to be like um, something like five to seven years, probably. Um, so yeah, it's kind of like if you only need a master's, you may not want to waste like the extra time in a PhD if it's not actually necessary. Um, but yeah, so I mean, these are just all things considered. I mean, it's like I said before, there's no like right or wrong answer. It's going to be like different for everyone. But I'm just trying to like give you guys information on like stuff to consider uh, in your own choice. But yeah, it's like PhD, um, you don't have to pay for it and you'll actually be getting paid. Uh, masters will probably need to pay for it. Um, but the master program is shorter. Um, it's like a lot shorter. Uh, but also like the master's program is probably going to be mostly like uh, like sitting in the classroom. Um, whereas the PhD program is like only going to be like class type stuff for probably like the first year. And then it'll be more like uh, more like research work. Um but yeah, so those are all just what I've covered so far. And this is like kind of general information about like what PhD programs are. Oh, I should also say one other thing that's important is that another, I've been saying how like the PhD program is like not really like that much classwork. It's more like research. So one thing um, about that, I, would, I wouldn't really call this a downside, but it's something to consider is that with like other grad schools, you have kind of like a set end time to it. Um, so it's like, like med school, law school, master's program. It's kind of like you do, um, you do the uh, course requirements and you pass all the courses and then you graduate and they give you the degree. The PhD program is different. Like PhD program is like, actually add this up here too. Um, you don't graduate just by like passing a bunch of courses and then they give you the, the degree or something. In order to graduate, you need to complete a dissertation. So, um, make a note of this. So the dissertation is basically like, um, you need to complete enough new original research that, that your advisor and your, like, uh, your committee think that you deserve the PhD. You know what I mean? So it's kind of like, it's not just a matter of like passing a bunch of courses. You need to actually like, produce like new original research in the field um and you need to like be like publishing papers and stuff to the point where they think you actually like deserve the phd um so it's this could be this i would say this is like a downside but this kind of like um something to think about is there's there's no set end point it's not like you just uh not like you just pass all of your courses and then you're finished with it you need to actually like get research done. You know what I mean? So it's a, a little bit like more complicated than just like passing like a set number of courses. You'd actually like publish papers and like get research done and then eventually like write up all your research into this dissertation. And it has to be like good enough and like solid enough research that that it's good enough to like be awarded the uh, the uh, doctoral degree. So that's kind of uh, that's kind of how that works. So I wouldn't necessarily say that's like a downside, but it's like something to something to know going into it. So I mean, you do sometimes hear horror stories of people like something goes wrong with their like research or something and they end up like stuck in the program for like 
eight or nine years or something. Like that's not like unheard of. So there is kind of always like uh, there is kind of that fear that you could be like stuck in it like forever if you don't if you don't make enough progress on the research. But um, but yeah, I mean that's there's something to know uh, going into it. Not really like necessarily downside, but just something to be aware of. Um, but yeah, so like all that stuff so far has been like um, general information about like PhD programs. So now I'm going to get more into like um, stuff about these fields specifically, like bioinformatics, uh, computational biology, and data science. And like I said, like my my program is kind of like a mix of these things. It's called the official name of the program is like bioinformatics data science. And then my um, my specific research is about like computational cell biology. Um, so I'll just talk about like something interesting about like these fields. And these are these are all kind of like are different things, but they're all also like pretty similar and somewhat used interchangeably. Um, I mean, maybe not data science, like, I mean, but if you think about these, like bioinformatics and like computational bio are, are kind of like, you can think of them like subcategories within this broader category of data science to some extent. And something interesting about these fields is that they're kind of like interdisciplinary. So when you think about the prereqs to like most like grad school programs, it's kind of like, um, I mean, if you're going for like a PhD in physics, you would probably need to have like your undergrad be in physics. And if you're going for like a PhD in like uh, English or something, you probably want to have your undergrad be in English. But for these, like they're pretty interdisciplinary and actually like a lot of undergrad programs won't have majors for like these specific topics. So it's kind of like the question here is like, what do you need to major in in order to get into like a grad school program for like bioinformatics? computational bio or data science? And the answer to that is, um, I can't speak for every program, but there's kind of like a broad range of backgrounds that people are coming from, at least in like my program. But I'd say it's like, um, I'd say for this kind of like either, either biology uh, or uh, some computational field. So I actually majored in economics in my undergrad, which is like totally different, or I mean, sounds like totally different from biology, right? I mean, like economics, is like totally different field. Um, it's not even a natural science at all. And so I majored in economics and I got um, a joint minor in math and computer science. So I was taking a lot of like programming classes too and, you know, stuff like that, computer science, uh, you know, stuff like that. But in my undergrad, actually, I didn't take, not only did I not take any biology classes, I didn't take any natural science classes like at all. And actually, the only the only college course I took in the natural sciences was some like AP classes I took in high school. But when I was actually like in college, I mean, I had those like college credits for like AP bio or whatever. But I didn't take any undergrad like natural science classes like at all. It was all just like economics and like math and computer science and these like uh, a lot of like a lot of like modeling classes and like uh, programming, um, data science stuff like that. Um, but no biology, uh, really at all. But, um, so I, I was thinking like, uh, I was kind of thinking like that might be like a problem, like getting into like getting into this kind of like bioinformatics, like computational biology program. But at least in my program, um, what they said was they want you to either have like either have a biology, like experimental type of background or a computational background. And you don't necessarily need to have both. But it's kind of like as long as you have um, as long as you have the computational side covered, you I think will have like a fighting chance of like getting into these programs, even if you don't really have any biology background. And same goes like, you know, vice versa, too. If you have like biology background, even if you don't know any program or any like any advanced math or anything, um, if you have a biology background, I think you'll still also have like a fighting chance. But it's kind of like at least with my program, I don't know if this is true for all of them, but kind of like if you have one or the other then you should be okay because you can just learn, learn whatever side you're kind of lacking on. Um, but yeah, of course, of course, better if you have both, but uh, if you're strong in at least like one of these sides, either the bio side or the computational side, if you're like very strong and like very skilled on like one of those sides, then I think you'll have like a good chance of like getting into one of these programs and then you can just like kind of learn the other, uh, yeah, pick up the other uh, as you go. Um, yeah, so I guess moving on to the next section, like financial considerations and opportunity costs. So it's kind of like I said, like um, with a PhD program, like probably, probably there's going to be no tuition 
and probably you're going to actually be getting paid, um, which is pretty awesome because it's kind of like I've been saying, like, I mean, even though it's called like grad school and stuff and it is, you are like technically a student, it does feel more like a job where it's like you're working for the university. It's like a research assistant and like you're not paying them and they're actually paying you a salary. Um, but so it's pretty awesome, like financially speaking, because it's like you are getting paid and it is like a job kind of. Uh, but there are, we do need to think about like in terms of financial considerations, um, what in economics is called opportunity cost. So the opportunity cost is like the, uh, it's, it's not like a financial like accounting cost, like, oh, like you're paying them some amount of money. Opportunity cost is more like what opportunity are you foregoing to take some opportunity, to take some like other opportunity, you know what I mean? So it's kind of like if you do, if you do enter a PhD program, what is the opportunity cost of like what you're choosing not to do? You know what I mean? So I'll just give you guys some like um, some some numbers here. So like probably with a PhD program, you could probably expect something like um, like twenty five thousand to uh, thirty five thousand terms of salary. I'm just kind of like I'm kind of just making these numbers up to be honest. Like I, I don't know. I haven't looked up any like actual like official data or whatever, but um, I'm kind of just like ballparking these. That's probably probably most like programs. The uh, the salary is going to fall somewhere in between like twenty five thousand, like thirty five thousand, or or, <coughs> <coughs> or you know somewhere somewhere around that kind of uh, that general like ballpark estimate. Um, so yes, yeah, so that's kind of the salary. So. And like I said, it's pretty awesome. So I'm not I'm not saying this to complain or anything. I'm I'm not trying to like complain uh, complain about the uh, the financial situation of like being a PhD student because I'm actually like very very grateful at um, my university's generosity. You know, even just paying me to like work on the stuff at all. Because I mean, like I said before, it's like I'm getting paid to do my hobby. So in some ways, it's kind of like um, it's kind of like a totally awesome situation. So I do really appreciate them like paying me to like work on the stuff that I would, I would gladly do for free. Um, but at the same time, it's like, when we think about opportunity cost, we're thinking about like, okay, like how much would you get paid in a PhD program versus like how much would you be getting paid if you weren't doing a PhD program? So it's kind of like, if you're, if you have these skills, like if you have this computational background um, from your undergrad or like a master's or something, and then you're thinking about like going into a PhD program, like, chances are you probably could be making more money like just at a regular job, not in grad school. So let's say if you were like a computer programmer at like um, just a regular company or something, um, let's say you did that instead of joining a PhD program, you'd probably be making like for sure more than like 35,000 um, in a salary just at this job as a programmer for some company or something. So you'd probably be making maybe even double that um, maybe even triple that actually. So um, it's just, everyone has to kind of like weigh this themselves. Um, Cause I mean, with the PhD program, it's kind of like I've been saying, like you're getting paid to like do something that like hopefully is like your hobby and like your passion. You know what I mean? So you need to, you know, weigh kind of uh, weigh, weigh the finances and also weigh like how much you'll enjoy what you're doing. You know what I mean? So it's like, if it's like, uh, if it's like 30,000 a year to work on like cool research that you're super passionate about and really like being paid to go to school, being paid to learn, being paid to like work on like your hobby basically, how does 30,000 for that compare to like 70,000 um, programming at a job that is like, eh, maybe you're okay with it, but it's like kind of boring, not really your passion. It's kind of just like a job, job or, you know, whatever. So it's kind of like, there's, again, like I've been saying this whole time, there's no like right or wrong answer. It's kind of just like, um, for each person, everyone has to like weigh that choice themselves. Like, like how does 30,000 a year doing your hobby sound compared to like 70,000 a year or so at like, um, kind of like a boring, like nine to five job. Uh, so, I mean, yeah, like no right or wrong answer, but, um, but there are some other things to consider too. Like you do need to consider also like the location of where, where you're thinking about going to school. Um, so I'll just, I'll make a note of this, like, uh, like PhD salary, um, feels a lot different in, uh, low cost of living areas 
uh, versus high cost of living areas. So for example, I'm going to school in Delaware, which is like a low cost of living area. So for me, like this, the, the PhD student salary actually like feels pretty good and I can afford like a pretty nice apartment. Um, it's not super fancy or anything, but it's like pretty nice. Um, I don't feel like I'm like struggling financially or anything because I'm just, uh, you know, even though it's like objectively speaking, it's kind of like a low salary, but it's kind of, um, in like a low cost of living area. So it feels like, I still feel like pretty financially comfortable. Um, but if you're going to school in like a very high cost of living area, like, like San Francisco or like, uh, New York city or something, or, you know, just a, a place that costs more, you may need to like weigh that in your considerations too. Like even if it's like the same salary, um, it's kind of like how much is rent in that area? How much are groceries? How much does it cost to have, you know, spending money to have fun on the weekends or whatever? Um, so, I mean, just when you're, when you're considering like the finances of this, just like think about, um, don't just think about like the nominal salary. Think also about like cost of living too. Uh, you know what I mean? So yeah, that's just, that's just all I'd say about like the financial considerations. Like it's kind of like, it is pretty awesome that you're like getting paid uh, to be in the program, getting paid to like work on like cool research, but it's also like. Think for yourself about like opportunity costs. Um, what would you be doing if you uh, weren't in the PhD program? Would you be happier or would you be more happy, you know, in the PhD program? Um, and also, you know, considering like cost of living and, uh, and stuff like that too. That's, that's all I really say about that. And then, so the last section I have here um, to uh, tell you guys about is, um, is career paths. So something to think about here is like being, being in the PhD program isn't going to be the job for like the rest of your life. It's, it's only going to be like, you know, like a, a five year or six year or so like phase of your life that should be like a stepping stone to whatever you want, um, your eventual career to be, you know what I mean? So it's kind of like, um, you just think about like, so what career are you shooting for and does it require a PhD? And if it doesn't require a PhD, will a PhD help? Um, and just think about that stuff and then, you know, weigh those answers in your choice. You know what I mean? So I'll say, so th there's really like, uh, so, so the big, the big, um, the big question for like scientific researchers usually that like everyone kind of faces in their career path is, um, whether they want to go into academia or industry or possibly some third option, like, uh, like, like some, uh, nonprofit work or like government work or something. But, but really the big choice people talk about is like academia versus industry. And I'll just say first things first, um, if you're going into academia, um, so the answer is going to probably be like, yes, you need a, a PhD. So if you want to be like a, a tenure track professor, um, there might be some like um, rare exceptions where you can do it with like a master's or undergrad or something if you have enough professional experience. But for like the vast majority of like tenure track uh, professor jobs in academia, it's like, yes, you are going to need a PhD and um, probably also a postdoc, probably at least one postdoc, which is like um, the job you get like after a PhD, a postdoctoral fellowship. Um, but yeah, it's like to be like an academic researcher at a university, like on um, in, like a tenure track position, um, the answer is like basically going to be like, yes, you do need a PhD for that. And then even then, even with the PhD, those jobs are like super competitive, like, like, um, a hundred people applying for like one job, maybe even more. Uh, so those are like, some of the thing about too is, I mean, yeah, those are like super competitive. I don't want to like discourage anyone from, you know, pursuing your dreams or whatever, but just, you know, follow your dreams, but also like have like a realistic picture of the situation. So I'll just say like, if you're shooting for like a tenure track, um, like professor job in academia, um, Yes, you will need a PhD for that. And then on top of that, it's going to be like super competitive uh, on top of that. But, but yeah, so if you're trying to go into academia, like, yeah, you do need a PhD uh, for that. So that's basically, um, basically all there is to that. In industry, in industry, it's a little bit more divided and it's going to depend on kind of what specifically you're going into. And I would say within industry, um, there's kind of a divide between like, the tech sector in general versus the biotech sector specifically. And I don't want to get into any like philosophical rants or whatever about like how I think things should be because 
like my opinion on this stuff is that I would actually I think it would be it would be good like for society in general to like move away from like credentialism and into more like meritocracy. Um, so I would say that like maybe degrees shouldn't matter so much and it should be more about like your skills and like what you know how to do and like your experience and stuff. Um, and I think the tech sector is kind of moving in that direction. So let's make a note of this, say like, um, in the, sorry, industry, uh, tech sector. Um, yeah, the tech sector is kind of like, a, it's kind of like a meritocracy to some extent, more so than other industries. So if you're trying to be like a, uh, a data scientist in like the broader tech sector, not biotech specifically, but it's like the, the broader, um, the broader tech field, if you want to be like a data scientist, um, you probably don't need a PhD. Uh, and it'll probably be more about like what you know how to do. So I'll say, yeah, for this part, it's like um, kind of kind of meritocracy. Uh, probably don't need a PhD. Um, I'll also put though, like all the, although, sorry, it might help. And what I mean by that is that like, it's not gonna be, if you're applying for like a um, data scientist job at like a tech startup or something, um, probably a lot of them, and if so, if, by the way, if I'm, I'm kind of just like guessing here to some extent, all of this based on like job postings I've seen, but if anyone wants to like correct me on this in the comments, like please feel free to, free to correct me on like any of this stuff. But based on like my own like job searching around and stuff, um, I think probably it's not gonna like require a PhD, but um, it's not gonna have like as much of like a degree requirement where it's like a yes, no, I have this degree, I don't have this degree. It's probably gonna be like more about um, more about your skills and your experience in general. Um, and like based on like kind of like what you know how to do, your programming portfolio, like past projects you've worked on. So this is kind of one of the things where it's like, it's with the, the PhD can still help though, because it's not really about like the degree itself. It's about, um, and see, this is the good thing about like the PhD program compared to, to like uh, undergrad or whatever, where it's like the PhD program isn't just about like getting the piece of paper saying that you have some degree or whatever. It's also about getting like five years of actual like relevant experience working on a research topic. So you do get like five years of like, of like program experience in data science, five years of, um, five years of working on projects, five years of collaborating, five years of like professional experience in whatever field you're in. Um, so it's in some ways it can still help even for like the general tech sector, but it's not going to probably be as much about the degree itself. It's going to be more about that like five years of like professional experience you've got like building up your programming portfolio and, uh, and working on projects that you can then, uh, and then uses like evidence of your skills and just like building up these skills, building up this like technical expertise. So I think that could still be definitely useful, even though it's not going to be like this, like, yes or no, I have the degree. I don't have the degree type, uh, kind of rigidity, uh, of some other fields. But then also say, um, it's a bit different, uh, in the biotech sector specifically, and again, I was kind of saying that like one thing I, I like about the general tech sector is kind of like more of like a meritocracy, but for like the um, biotech sector, and again, this isn't based on um, like, I'm not like an, really an expert on like any of this stuff or like, you know, the job market or anything. This is all just based on like me looking on like indeed.com and like other job finding websites. I mean, sometimes I just go on there and like check. Um, I just check for myself and just see kind of, you know, looking around for like cool jobs that I might want to do one day, seeing what the requirements are. I found that in like the biotech sector, they haven't fully gotten on board with like, um, the like pure meritocracy thing of like the rest of the tech sector yet. So, so a lot of the times like for biotech jobs at like biotech startups or like even like big pharma companies, they actually still will like require a PhD if you want to be like a computational biologist at one of these companies or something. Um, and maybe that's going to change in the future. Maybe I hope that things will kind of pivot towards more like skills based hiring versus like uh, credential based hiring. But at least like at the moment, um, the moment it seems like the biotech sector, like for a lot of the, like the high level positions, 
I mean, you could still, of course, get like kind of like a lab tech job with like an undergrad degree or something. But for like the actual like legit um, scientist researcher positions at these at these uh, biotech companies, it's it does seem based on what I've seen in like the job postings, it does seem like you do need um, you do need still to have uh, to have a PhD. So. Um, with that like yeah i mean i mean again this is just based on like my own like viewings of these job postings but i do think for like the biotech sector a lot of them do still require like the phd um to get this like high level uh you know researcher or scientist type jobs um but then like it's like the most important thing is that i mean don't take my word for any of this stuff i would just say like for you guys like my best advice is think about what job is like your dream job that you see yourself doing like in the long term for your career and then just like go like look on like indeed.com or like some other job web website and just like see for yourself like what are the requirements like for that job. You know what I mean? So I'll just say like the like the most important thing is um uh um yeah, just like look up your own dream job and just see what the requirements are and look around like that general field and just kind of see what the requirements are on the job postings. That's the best way to answer like these questions about like what degree you need for uh, your career path. Um, but yeah, for me at least, I'm, I'm hoping to go into like the biotech, uh, the biotech field. So that's that's kind of why I'm pursuing the uh, PhD. But it could be again like this whole this whole video has been like there's no like yes or no like right or wrong answer. It's just kind of like these are all things to consider. Um, you know, for everyone making their own choice. I'm just trying to like I'm not trying to tell you guys like you should or shouldn't do something. I'm just trying to like put all this information out there and hopefully people can kind of like weigh this in their own decision. Um, but yeah, so I mean, kind of just, uh, that's kind of all I have for this, uh, this life advice video. Um, like I said, like I'm in the third year of my PhD program now, so I'm not even like finished with the program yet. So maybe I'll even make another video like later on down the line in my career, um, kind of reflecting back on this, like in hindsight, if I thought it was a good choice or not. Um, but at least for now, I'm definitely like happy with my situation. Now I'm that like definitely really enjoying the PhD program. Uh, kind of feels like I'm like living the dream, getting paid to like do what uh, my hobby is and stuff. Um, but again, that might not be the case for everyone. So there's just like a lot of stuff to consider, and there's just all information that is like worth considering before uh, before you guys kind of make your own choice uh, in this. Um, but yes, yeah, so that's it for today. So if you guys have any questions, um, any questions. Uh, you're about like specific, um, you know, specific computational biology material or specific, um, or I mean, or sorry, or, or like more like general life advice about this uh, career path. Um, if you guys have any questions, just like let me know in the comments and I'll try to uh, answer them. But um, yes, that's for today. So uh, thanks for watching and uh, see you next time.